Hello everyone, my name is Christina and I'm a medical student studying at Newcastle University and in this video with um, obviously uni starting up soon and everything I just wanted to share with you guys some of my favourite medical school resources especially if you're in your pre-clinical years so years one and two so I've broken this video up into different resources for different uh, topics so I'm going to start off with a bunch of anatomy resources then I'm going to move on to pathophysiology and so on Starting off with anatomy, probably my favourite resource for anatomy is this YouTube channel called The Noted Anatomist. So this is an American teacher, he has a PhD in anatomy I think. He is American but all of his resources and all of his videos I found are very very accurate to, to what we learn in the UK. I think sometimes it can be really difficult to find resources online specifically for like the UK medicine world so whenever I find an American person who does things quite accurately to how we do things I always like really really value that. But I love his videos because he's got a really good sense of humour and he just makes everything so easy to understand. I think anatomy is a complicated topic because there's so much going on and there's so much detail that you could go into because obviously there's anatomy like gross anatomy and then there's micro anatomy as well and it can just get really complicated but his videos are amazing he's definitely one of my favorites highly recommend him if you're a big fan of watching videos to try and learn things my next favorite anatomy resource is one called teach me anatomy this is a massive favorite amongst all medical students i think they also have a physiology resource called Teach Me Physiology, but um, yeah, Teach Me Anatomy is amazing. Their website is really well organized, so it's split into different things like GI, respiratory, cardiology, and you can kind of just figure out what you uh, want to learn on their website. And each page is pretty much split into the different key topics that you want to know. Their website is so, so simple, so they don't go into too much detail. They go into, I'd say, the right amount. You don't learn too much or too little. If you learn all the information on the Teach Me Anatomy website, then I'd say you've Got all the information that you need to know. The next resource is Anatomy Zone. So this is a YouTube channel and they're similar to the Noted Anatomist but so they use kind of 3D imaging on their on their videos to kind of show you the structures, they can kind of flip them around, they can do that thing where they show you a structure, take things away, add things in to show you how it kind of all, put, all comes together. I remember when I learned about the larynx and the pharynx which is pretty much just the voice box in your neck and that was a really complicated topic but Anatomy Zone, their videos made it really easy to try and understand that topic for me so I highly recommend them as well. Moving on to pathophysiology, as I mentioned before Teach Me Physiology is run by the same company that Teach Me Anatomy is run by and they're very very similar so they have their page organized into cardio, GI, respiratory and all the different other topics, endocrinology I think and you can pretty much just learn all the physiology that you need to know. They go, they go into the perfect amount of detail. You won't learn too little or too much if you learn the Teach Me Physiology website so I do recommend them for you guys if you're not quite sure how much you need to learn at my medical school we don't get a we don't get any past papers so when it comes to revision you do rely very heavily on like online content and stuff like this sometimes not knowing what past papers um look like it's difficult to know how much do i need to learn but i've noticed that when i've done a couple of exams now these websites tend to go into the right amount of detail I've noticed on the Teach Me Anatomy website and the Teach Me Physiology one as well, they normally have a little quiz that you can do after you've made notes on that page or after you've read that page. So if you kind of want to quiz yourself, which I like to do, um, yeah, that's a great reason to use Teach Me Anatomy as well. My next favorite resource is Almost Adopted at Coda UK. So this is a British website, which is fantastic because as I mentioned earlier, it can be really difficult to find like British resources. So on this website, they have a bunch of different information covering all aspects of physiology and pathology. So if you're trying to figure out um, just how the normal functions of the tissues and organs work, this is a great website, especially if you're just being bombarded with lots of US websites that you're not quite sure if they're accurate to like the NICE guidelines and the GMC and stuff. Um, Almost a Doctor Dakota UK is really, really good as well. Another amazing YouTube channel is, is Armando H. I'll put his full name here. I don't want to butcher his surname. This, this YouTube channel is absolutely amazing. So this is pretty much a guy, I think he's an Australian resident, so like a junior doctor in Australia. And he makes videos pretty much on so many different topics. He also does anatomy videos to be fair. So he's just an all around great resource. His videos are pretty much just laid out as him drawing the different mechanism, process, anatomical structure. And he just pretty much explains things. He explains things so, so well. And I love the fact that when he does his final drawing of everything all together, like the whole process, you can actually download his drawings, I think as a revision resource. So if you wanted to print them out and put them on your wall, I think he lets you download them from his website. So I'll have him linked down below in case you're into like posters and stuff like that. 
A very similar YouTube channel is one called Medicosis Perfectionalis. Um, the guy behind this is actually really, really funny. I really enjoy his videos. Um, he makes things super duper easy to understand. He's always my go-to resource for physiology and pathology. So very similar to Armando, he kind of does like um, drawings on like the screen and he'll explain things as he goes along. He also has bits of text as well to kind of make it really easy to understand. I really like it because he tends to always have a really good acronym to help you remember something or a really good phrase that kind of rhymes so you can remember it. I just, I always rely on him because he always makes it easy to understand. Armando is great, but he never really has like really cool tricks to help you like understand things. And I really like whenever there's an acronym or something like that. Um, but Medicosis Perfectionalis tends to have that. So yeah, if you're into that kind of thing like I am, then I highly recommend this channel. Another great um, physiology resource is Osmosis. So this is an incredibly popular website. They are American and you do get a bunch of free videos on YouTube. However, they are kind of like more a website in their, on their own. They used to have this thing where you would pay monthly and I think it was like 15 pound a month. Uh, which isn't too bad for access to all of their videos and a bunch of flashcards, a bunch of different, um, a bunch of really good resources, but now they've kind of moved it to a yearly thing. So you pay $200 a year, which I guess is quite good. I don't know if that works out cheaper or not, but yeah, on YouTube, they have a bunch of free videos and their videos are quite short as well. They tend not to be longer than 10 minutes, which I quite like. Um, and yeah, it's really simple diagrams, really easy to understand. I have noticed that they don't go into enough detail in my opinion, but I think they're great to kind of just understand the basic topic. So if there's a topic that you're really struggling with and you don't get it at all, I think Osmosis is the best place to go to initially. And then if you want like a bit more information, then maybe go to Armando or Medicosis Perfectionalis and other people like that. Another great one is Ninja Nerd Science or Ninja Nerd Medicine. Now, this is pretty much the same guy behind it, but he has two, two separate channels. One of them is Ninja Nerd Science. The biology videos are more what I tend to watch for revision. And then he also has Ninja Nerd Medicine. And it's this American guy who just uses like this massive whiteboard and draws out um, lots of different diagrams to help explain like a topic. And his videos are really, really good. If you're looking to like um, maybe do a bit more wider reading, I'd recommend his videos because he goes into more than enough detail than what you need to know but he's able to explain things really really well and break them down into really just understandable chunks so for histology i have one main resource and then two other kind of um side ones but my medical school very kindly gives us access to myers histology this is a website that pretty much gives you lots of different um pictures, quizzes, just information and different ways of understanding and learning histology. Um, I think you do have to pay for this resource, but if your medical school does give you access to this, definitely make use of it. I find it really, really helpful. On our actual medical school exams, we don't get that many histology questions. Normally our exams are like 150 questions and there's like two, three, maybe four at most histology questions. It's not a major kind of topic that you need to revise, but if you are struggling with it, then Myers is a great resource to use. If your medical school doesn't give you access to Myers, then I researched and I found a couple of textbooks that are really, really good. It's called um, Weather's Functional Histology. Um, from the reviews, it looks like it has really good pictures. It's really easy to understand. And I think it's fairly up to date as well. So I'll have that linked below in the description box for you guys if you wanna purchase that. If you're not into textbooks, then another great website, which I think is free is called histologyguide.com um, and yeah this is fairly similar to Myers to be honest it's just a bunch of pictures helps you understand things and yeah it's really good for teaching you histology okay so moving on to pharmacology this is pretty much my worst topic to be honest I always struggle to remember all the different processes of how the drugs work in the body so for pharmacology, I actually don't have many resources. Um, I think a really good resource is the ICE guidelines website, as well as the BNF. Um, I'm like terrible with pharmacology. I need, if you guys have any recommendations for good pharmacology resources, I'd be so grateful because I'm really struggling with pharmacology. I think there's just so many drugs to use. And then there's always the first line treatment, second line, and it's like, there's so much to remember. So if you guys have any resources, that would be greatly appreciated, but yeah. The NICE guidelines is a great website. They tell you pretty much everything you need to know. There's just so much to learn. And then the BNF is great as well because they're kind of similar. They tell you kind of like the guidelines of who can use it, what dose and stuff like that. So yeah, NICE guidelines and BNF is what I'd recommend for pharmacology. So moving on to some of these social sciences, this is a fairly simple resource, which I'm sure you guys have heard of before, but 
Wikipedia is absolutely fantastic. Um, textbooks are amazing, but they can get fairly outdated fairly quickly if like a new thing happens in science or if a new thing happens in medicine. For social science, it can be quite difficult to know um, what's the truth and what's not, I guess, because it's kind of like fairly subjective in a way. I find it quite like fuzzy at times to know like what to like make notes on, but I find that Wikipedia is fairly, fairly accurate. I've noticed that the lecture content for social sciences tends to be not quite enough, so I do have to rely on like the internet quite a bit but again I haven't found an amazing resource for social sciences yet if you guys have any recommendations that would be great let me know okay moving on to OSCEs so my number one resource for OSCEs is Geeky Medics they are an app a website and a YouTube channel they have pretty much everything and they just pretty much coach you through what you need to do step by step in every single OSCE as well as every single um, history taking kind of process so yeah it's so easy to watch their videos they go into like a really good amount of detail as well it's not just like they kind of do the OSCE and then the, the video stops like they kind of pause the video explain things have little notations on the screen to help explain why they're doing certain things um so yeah they go into a great amount of detail on their website as well they have a bunch of information on the different things that you want to be looking for in each history and each OSCE as well um they're a great resource they have like loads and loads of information so I thought I'd give you guys a couple of resources to use if you want to practice um, for your SBA, which is your single best answer paper. Most medical school will have this. It's pretty much just a multiple choice paper. Um, so yeah, because my medical school, as I mentioned, we don't get past papers. So I find it really useful to use some of these websites, which I'm going to mention to kind of practice for your exams. So my first one is PassMed. Now this one is super popular as well. I've noticed that the questions on PassMed are very difficult. Like whenever I do them, I'm always like, oh my gosh, I've got like nothing right out of 20. But I think it is really good to practice them because obviously if they're really hard, then obviously when you do the actual exam, you're gonna be even more prepared. So they are a good one to use. Hi guys, editing Christina here, but I completely forgot to mention there are two other multiple choice websites that are really, really good. One of them is specifically for GI disorders, but it's still very, very helpful. And then another one is more general, like anatomy and physiology. Um, I'll put pictures of both of them on the screen and I'll kind of link them down in the description box below. Okay, so my next one is called Radiopedia. So this is a website that's specifically for learning about um, like x-rays and radiology. So on an exam, you'll get a couple of questions which are pretty much just imaging questions. So a CT scan and it will tell you like what structure is this or an x-ray and it'll tell you like what's wrong with this person learning how to interpret ct scans mri scans um x-rays that is really important on this website they have lots of information and radiological pictures which i find really helpful to revise a very similar one to radiopedia is one called radiology masterclass um it's very similar they've got lots of information pictures as well as little quizzes as well and my last resource for multiple choice questions is Ankydex on Reddit. So this is an idea that I got from Ali Abdal. He mentioned that, you know, it takes absolutely ages to make different flashcards for things. So instead of doing that, you can always find different decks on different topics like anatomy or, you know, GI physiology, stuff like that. You can find lots of decks already made on Reddit. And I haven't done this myself, but I thought I'd mention it to you guys. I might start doing this next year. I guess we'll see. I noticed that last year a lot of my revision time was spent making the flashcard and I know that you can kind of use that as revision because you can kind of write the question out have a think and then check the answer and write the answer in the in the flashcard but I don't know I think next year I'm going to try and maybe save time and just use ready-made decks like this um the only thing is I think when you use someone else's flashcards you it takes a while to adjust how they've made them and what words they're using and how they write the answers and stuff but um i think it will save me so much time because it takes ages to write them and then obviously you have to study them as well quizlet is another good one i do use quizlet here and there i don't use them um that much but i use them on and off so thank you so much for watching this video i really hope these resources have been helpful for you uh, and yeah i'll see you in the next one bye A very similar to what